Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and uh, today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and a very powerful lesson from Raya the Last Dragon, Raya and the Last Dragon, for, um, for your Dungeons & Dragons dungeon mastering uh, skill set and what you need to do to make sure that you don't suffer the fate Raya and the Last Dragon suffered. All right, so let's talk about Raya and the Last Dragon. So uh, what was my journey to watch this film? So uh, this was one of those um, in the movies and on streaming releases, which turned out to be an absolute nightmare. It didn't work for anyone. It didn't work for HBO. It didn't work for, uh, for Disney. Um, it, it's, it's, and Raya particularly was a, was a movie. Yeah, we'll talk about Raya in one minute, but it, it didn't work out well. Like it, did, it had really bad numbers. Um, and it didn't appear to draw a lot of people to uh, Disney Plus, which is exactly that's what they want for it. It didn't seem to accomplish any of the goals that, the, that Disney wanted for Raya and the Last Dragon. And I can tell you why. Let's talk about Raya and the Last Dragon. Raya and the Last Dragon is not a bad move. Is not Raya and the La Last Dragon has a lot of great things about it. It was not without significant, very powerful awesome aspects, okay? So, what was great about Raya and the Last Dragon? Tremendous world building. Oh, and you know what? Raya and the Last Dragon is, after all said and done, and you'll know why in a minute, it's not a great movie. It's not It's not good, right? But I actually think it's every Dungeon Master content, okay? Every Dungeon Master has to watch Raya and the Last Dragon because it, it's fairly easily accessible. It's going to cost you four bucks at the end of the day, and the lessons from it are worth far more than four bucks, okay? So first of all, what does Raya and the Last Dragon do right, okay? Well, what it does right is it very, very powerfully does world building. It does absolutely fantastic, almost flawless world building, right? Like just tremendous world building. And so that is, that's a really big deal. I, I think that's really awesome that, it, that the world building is so good with why Raya and the Last Dragon, right? So just love it. I think that's really a cool aspect of, of the movie. The world building is tremendous. It actually uses a map, and it tells you about Kumandra, which is this, which is the world of Raya and the Last Dragon. And Kumandra is a world where there were hundreds of dragons. They were in everybody's lives every day. They had godlike powers, and they lived with human beings, right? But at one point, um, these things, these evil things called drones, came into the world. By the way. Spoilers, if you didn't get it. Spoilers for Raya and the Last Dragon. Uh, I'm going to put a lot more spoilers in here. Um, so, um, so basically, uh, so you have, um, so Raya and the Last, Kumandra is this world, and it's built extremely well. So each region of Kumandra, it, Kumandra is actually literally a country that is in the shape of a dragon, right? And once, um, and basically, these drones come, and when the drones come, they turned all the dragons into stone, and then the world is left with the drones trying to turn all the humans left into stone. So, this is a world where there are literally thousands of petrified humans. Humans are just petrified into statues. So, the entire land is, is littered with these, stat these, you know, stone statues that the drones these creatures, if they if they touch human humans, they turn them into stone, and they've already successfully turned all all the dragons into stone. Okay, so the world building is and the thing I love is they used a map and they showed the map throughout the movie, and they said there's these five regions of Kumandra, there is tail, <coughs> there is spine, there is um, fang, there is heart, and there is uh, I think there was like one more. Um, you know, one more area, uh, uh, yeah, but, and so they split up the map into these different regions, right, so, um, so specifically Raya's protagonist, um, Raya, okay, uh, she, ha she goes, uh, against a, so Raya's the protagonist, and the antagonist is a cat assassin from the region of Fang, and her name is Namari, so Raya and Namari are pitted against each other, and they're both trying to do the same thing. They uh, this dragon orb, which will which can be used to resurrect the last of the dragons, um, Sisu, right? They both want this dragon orb. Um, in the beginning of the film, Raya 
Raya trusts Namari and shows Namari the the dragon gem. Um, there, Namari betrays Raya and then takes the dragon gem. Okay, and now actually all of this, actually every single, I'll, I, I won't bury the lead. Every single thing in this movie is amazing except the end. The end is atrocious and ruins the whole film. So that's so. So in summary, Raya has unbelievable world building, amazing characters, amazing art, amazing voice work, and a pure trash ending that ruins the whole ball of wax. It is just very, very bad, right? And it's really sad because it, it, it really was, it was firing on all cylinders. It was just a fantastic film. And I was there for it, man. I was just having the best time. And the, and the problem is the ending was 100% predictable and it came from worldview. It came from message. And I knew I could have written the ending before I saw it, right? And it was just like, and, it, and I knew the ending of the movie because I know Disney's worldview. I know their message. And it doesn't, it never ever changes. It has like 20 different points, right? Things that they believe. But because they believe them so hard, they have no ability to move in their narrative. Because their narrative is is sub is subjugated. Their narrative is subjugated to their message, right? And this is what I'm talking about today. Don't get in a situation where your worldview, the message you want to tell with your Dungeons and with your Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, where your message is so staunch that the players always know what you will do, right? And they know when it comes to the ending and things need to and all the puzzle pieces need to be set down and the and the image needs to be created, right? When all the puzzle pieces are there, and now you're gonna you're gonna fit them together to show, you know, like think of a tanagram, right? It's it's made of a bunch of triangles, right? You collect your triangles throughout the setting, you know, throughout your campaign. But at the end, you're gonna make a snake, or you're gonna make a dragon, or you're gonna make a, a square, or you know, your tanagrams are these circles. But when it, when you pull all the pieces together, you're gonna you have to make something, right? Don't make it so that they always know what you're gonna do. And I, and this is what really just drove me crazy about Raya. Uh, Aquafina was amazing in this film. She did such a tremendous job as the last dragon Sisu. It was funny. It was delightful, right? But at the end, Raya and Namari go into a fight, right? So we're 20 minutes from the end, right? And I'm like, I can write all the rest of this. I know what's going to happen. And I got really sad when when Namari and Raya pull out their swords and go into a fight, and I, and they start and they really viciously attack each other, right? I was like, oh my gosh! For like five seconds, I was like. This is going to be an exciting fight. I wonder what's going to happen. And then I was like, oh, I forgot. This is a Disney movie. Disney's message is so staunch that I already know. So Raya and Namari share multiple attributes. But one of the attributes they share, according to, in my opinion, according to Disney, means that they can never, ever have any actual conflict that is lasting. They, Because they share this attribute, because both characters have this one attribute, they can't have a lasting conflict. They have to have a harmonious ending to their conflict. And they can't even actually harm each other in any physical way, right? Because they share this one attribute, right? Now, if that attribute were switched, if it were inverted, right? Then those type of characters can have actual lasting conflict that ends in, uh, in, a, mortal, in a mortal wound, right? But I knew as soon as Namari and Raya started fighting... That they couldn't even, they couldn't even have a cosmetic wound, let alone a mortal wound between them, right? And to be clear, that they were allowing characters to mortally wound other characters, right? In the movie, in the movie, Namari shoots Sisu with a with an arrow and kills her, right? Like, um, and so I was like, so, you know, Namari and Sisu do not share this attribute, right? One's a dragon, one's a human. Um, and so that could, there can be actually a lasting conflict. There could be a mortal wound between the two of them. But I knew Namari and Raya could never have a lasting conflict, right? Because, because there's a message that Disney wants to put across. That if you have this attribute, all of your, all of your conflicts can be handled with talking, right? With just a good heart to heart, right? But if you but if that attribute is flipped, you could have actual real combat, right? But oh, but but if you have the, if you share the same attribute, that can't happen, right? So I so and that that was what really made me sad. And so I knew 
that they're, and sure enough, they fought and then they got separated by the environment, right? So there was no conclusion to their combat, right? And then in order to, uh, in order to uh, like get the dragon gem, what they all had to do was they all had every single character in order to solve the world problem was give up to the Druun and become stone. After they had given up, after they had all placed their dragon gems together. So they had to sacrifice their dragon gems to their enemies, right? And then they had to sacrifice and literally lose their lose their mobility and, frankly, their life. I think a petrified thing is not alive, right? Lose their lives to their enemies. So it was sacrificed all the way to the point of... The, the movie was so anti-combat that, that the movie did not allow the characters to actually combat their enemy. Only by sacrificing everything... And being willing, literally, to die, could they defeat their actual energy enemies, which, which were the Druids. Which again is just 100% Disney. Like, you know, combat is dead. Like, you know, it can be performative, right? But it can't be conclusive. You can't have a winner and a loser. Even having a winner and a loser is anti-Disney, right? And 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 resolving anything through combat, right, is very anti-Disney. And also, you know, ever having a lasting conflict that has real gravitas and real differences between two characters, if they share this one attribute, is impossible, right? And so I knew this going into... So I knew this going into the movie. Now, the reason why we watched it is it finally dropped off of premium access. We already have Disney+. Plus, and we're like, we can watch this as a family and, and enjoy... We, we'll get some it. And we absolutely got enjoyment. We laughed out loud. We enjoyed the movie up to the ending, right? But you need to learn, right... I could not enjoy Raya and the Last Dragon because um, Disney's narrative is subjugated to their message. You need to not do this, and it is not easy, right? If you if you have things that you believe in your heart, right, you can put them into your game at a rate of even two to three, right? Like sixty six percent of your of your stories can end with you, the message you want to get across, right? But you have to have a third where one you let the dice say what happens. That's part of what we do, right? We can't control our narrative completely because the dice are going to, the dice will speak, right? And a good dungeon master lets the dice speak. A good dungeon master never fudges, right? Fudging is for hacks. Fudging is for bad dungeon masters. If you listen to this channel, don't bother with it, right? It's like, you know, it's it's not good, right? Um, and so basically, we're in this situation where you need to make sure that you're... I know you want to get your message across. You have beliefs that you believe, right? But the reality is when you step to that table and you, you are the dungeon master, right? You need to make a compelling and unique and interesting story. And if you are always ending on the same flat note, right? And, and, and giving the same flat note, you're not going to move forward. And I'll tell you right now, I believe I'm very right because Raya did not move the ball forward for, uh, for Disney. It was really commercially and critically a failure. Right, uh, go check the internet. You can see if I'm wrong. I'm not. Right, people. People did not like this film. Right, and I'm telling you, everything was there to make an amazing film, and they bobbled it with the ending because they could not allow themselves to allow their narrative to be louder than their message. Don't make this mistake in your dungeon mastering. Make sure that at least one third of the time, the dice are telling the story rather than you. Even at the end, even at the critical end. Right? If all the characters are going to die, and the di and that's what the dice say, let it happen. Right? Don't let your story be predictable. Don't squander tons of work because you're too selfish to not listen to the dice, or you're too selfish to not allow the narrative, right, that has been born between the interaction between you and your players to be louder than the message you want to get across every time. Don't make the mistake Ryan the Last Dragon did. Well, that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did you see this movie? What did you think? Um, what is your? How much do you think um, message should uh, be over narrative? Or do you agree with me that narrative needs to be central? And your message needs to be very, very secondary. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider like subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.